dear, is Maxwell House really the only coffee in the world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by America's favorite coffee, Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. So once in every year we throng upon a day apart to praise the Lord with feast and song in thankfulness of heart. In November of the year 1621, our pilgrim fathers sat down to a table piled high with the fruits of a bountiful harvest. They offered their thanks in humble reverence and thereby established a precedent that we, the most fortunate people on earth, have followed with joy and gratitude for some 330 years. Thanksgiving Day is an American holiday, typically and exclusively ours. So let's spend the next half hour in the dining room of an average American home, the Andersons, and see how they, an average American family, are celebrating the most American day of the year, Thanksgiving. Like this. Everybody close their eyes. Well! Here comes the bird. The turkey! Boy, am I ever hungry. There you are. Mother, it's gorgeous. Put it right down here, honey. It sure smells good, Mom. Thank you, dear. I get a drumstick. Mother. Bud, keep your fingers out of there. I just wanted a piece of celery. Father hasn't said grace. Oh, excuse me. Don't forget, I get a drumstick. All right, Kathy. Go ahead, dear. You know, I found something very interesting the other day. Holy cow. Father, can't you tell us after? Betty. This pertains to the grace I'm about to say. And then I get a drumstick. I was looking through some old books at the library, and I ran across a prayer of thanks written by Benjamin Franklin in the year 1728. It was very unusual. Dear, it is getting awfully late. This will only take a few seconds, honey. And I think it'll do us all a lot of good. Benjamin Franklin divided everything in life into four categories. And it's amazing how thorough a job he did. He must have been a remarkable man. Jim. For example, in the first section of his Thanksgiving prayer, he gave thanks for the material things of life, such as food and drink and raiment. What's raiment? Clothing, dear. Oh. And giving thanks for clothing is a very appropriate part of a Thanksgiving prayer. When I think of some of the things that have gone on with clothes in this house. Jim, I hope you know what you're doing. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm getting just a little fed up with dressing in Bud's room. It isn't that bad. No, he had all of my neckties, all of my socks, all of my sweaters, and half of my pants. Are you sure? Yes, dear, I'm sure. In this house, the first one up isn't the best dressed. He's the only one who can get dressed. Then, but Bud certainly has enough clothes of his own. Of course he has. He just likes mine better, that's all. Dear, don't you think if we told them... I'm tired of telling them. Wait till they go up there and see a bunch of empty closets. That'll teach them. Naturally, I think we're right in taking our own things back, but to take all of theirs... It'll do them good. Maybe they'll learn to respect other people's property. Mother! We're home. Kathy! I'm here, Daddy. Good. All three of you go upstairs and get ready for lunch. And Betty? Yes, Mother? See that Kathy washes in back of her ears. Okay. <laughs> Wait till they see those closets. Jim, I think you're being very mean. I'm just trying to teach them a lesson. How would you like to open your closet and find all your clothes missing? Honey, I do it every day. <laughs> but every young boy... And Betty isn't any better. She had three of your pocketbooks, two unmentionables, five pairs of stockings, four... Dad! Here it comes. Hey, Dad! Remember, Margaret, you're to let me handle it. All right, but I still think there's an easier way. Dad, it's awful. It's terrible. What is it, son? What's the matter? My clothes, they're gone. Well, sit down. Let's see if we can't figure out what happened. My best gray slacks, they even took those. Uh, which best gray slacks would those be? You know, the ones that came with your gray suit. <laughs> I see. Your best gray slacks. And all of my ties, my whole collection. 
which you collected from my closet. And my sweaters and, and everything. Mother! Jim, I don't think I can go through with it. I'm practically naked. Mother! I just can't. Honey. What is it, Betty? We've been robbed. Somebody got in and we've been robbed. No. Everything's gone. Jim, if you don't tell them, I will. All right, Margaret, I'll tell them. Betty, bud, your mother and I arranged this whole thing to teach you a lesson. You what? Angel, let's not give me too much credit. <laughs> well, you were in on it. You mean... You got somebody to swipe our clothes? Nothing's been stolen, dear. You'll find all of your things in our room. Father! We just wanted to show you how we feel every morning of our lives. Dad. It's gotten so that, well, nothing in our wardrobe is sacred. Dad. My best neckties, your mother's cashmere sweaters, you wear them more than we do. Oh, Father. Dad. This was the only way I could figure to impress upon you that from now on, you're to leave our things alone. Dad. The next time you feel like <laughs> borrowing a pair of socks or a belt or a pair of your mother's gloves, you'll think twice about it, won't you? I'll get it! Dad. Just a minute, bud. I want to find out who's at the door. I know who's at the door. You what? We told Kathy to call the cops. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, oh, the grace. And then I get a drumstick. Well, in the second part of his Thanksgiving prayer, Benjamin Franklin concentrated on the natural phenomena of life. Things like air and light and fire and water. Fire is pretty important, isn't it, Mom? Yes, dear, it's very important. For stuff like heating up turkeys when they get cold. <laughs> huh, Dad? I'll get to the turkey in a minute. I just want to make sure that you all understand... Father, after what happened at Blue Paradise last winter, you don't have to worry about us. We remember about fire and water, all right. That was quite a day, wasn't it? I don't think I'll ever get the drumstick. Well, there it is, Blue Paradise. You mean that? Holy cow, Dad. You said it was a great big hunting lodge. Well, it... Uh, it looked larger the last time I was here. Jim, are you sure we ought to buy a hunting lodge? Honey, a bargain like this doesn't come along every day. I know it doesn't look like much from here, but... Well, let's go inside. Will it fall down? Of course not. Just don't touch any of those braces, that's all. Boy, what a dump. It's not supposed to be the Ritz-Carlton. We just want it for weekends and things. Why do they call it Blue Paradise? Look at those cracks in the wall. You probably turn blue in the middle of the night. Betty, you can't expect too much for $1,500. $1,500? Honey, the view of the lake alone is worth that. What view? What lake? <laughs> it's a very beautiful lake. All you have to do is walk about half a mile down the road and, well, it's... Very easy to see it from there. On a clear day. But if I hear one more word... Honey, look out. What? That, uh, the, the porch is a little weak in spots, but... Oh. Go ahead, bud. Open the door. There isn't any doorknob. You don't need a doorknob. Just to uh, push. Okay. Jim, do you really think... Bud! Grab it! Hey! Oh, dear. Bud, you didn't have to push that hard, did you? I just gave it a little push. Well, a couple of new hinges is all it needs. I've got an idea. Why don't we knock all the doors down and use them for a porch? Very funny. Are you going in, Margaret? I, um, uh, well, you only live once, I suppose. Everything may seem a little rough at first, but you'll get used to it. Well, how do you like it? It's got a nice foyer. Where's the living room? This is the living room. Nice and compact, isn't it, honey? Oh, yes. Yes, if it's anything, it's compact. It's dirty, too. <laughs> hey, look at this. The closet's got a window in it. Uh, that's the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Father, it isn't. Of course it is. How large do you want a bedroom to be? Large enough for a bed? 
I've got an idea. Why don't we buy it and rent it out to some midgets? But that isn't funny. Dear, it is a little small. You're not supposed to give dances up here. It's a place to relax, get back to nature. What's in here, Daddy? Uh, that's the kitchen. But I thought we could do all our cooking in the fireplace. That way we can turn the kitchen into another bedroom. Cook in the fireplace? Why not? The pioneers did it all the time. I see. This will do us all a lot of good. It might even teach us to appreciate the comforts we take so much for granted at home. Yes, I can believe that. If it'll do anything, it'll teach us to appreciate comfort. Isn't there any bathroom? Of course. You uh, just can't see it from here, that's all. <laughs> Daniel. Who? Mr. Boone. Oh. Yes? If there's any cooking to be done in a fireplace, guess who's going to do it? Me? I just wanted to get that straightened out. Honey, you don't seem to understand. Living the simple life this way can be a great adventure for all of us. Jim, there is nothing in the world that's more complicated than the simple life. I've got an idea. Of course, everybody's got ideas. We could eat on paper plates, and then we won't have to wash any dishes. That's the spirit, kitten. Speaking of washing, I don't see any water. There's a whole tub of it in the kitchen. You mean we have to carry it in from a well? No. You have to bring it up from the lake. Oh, <laughs> oh Jim. It isn't far. Why, Bud will get used to doing it in no time at all. <laughs> Me? But you said it's a half a mile. Dear, this is another thing we've got to straighten out. I'm not going to let a young boy like Bud carry heavy pails of water up here from any lake. But the pioneers... Honey, it won't hurt him to carry a few buckets of water. And besides, if I'm going to cook, I won't have the time. I've got an idea. You too? You can do it every morning, right after you chop the wood. What wood? For cooking, remember, dear? Like the pioneers? Margaret, if you're trying to discourage me... Why, Jim, I think living the simple life will do you a lot of good. You do? Of course. You'll get up early every morning and get your lungs full of good, clean air. While we're breathing that old stale stuff in the bedroom. <laughs> Betty, please. Then you'll run briskly down to the lake for water. After you chop some wood. And build a fire. Like the pioneers. Then you'll clean and fill the kerosene lamp. Wait a minute. Why do I have to do it all? You're the one who wants a hunting lodge. I know, but... I think you're going to enjoy it. Cooking our breakfast and lunch and dinner. And chopping some more wood. And carrying some more water. Like the pioneers. <laughs> Say, I've got a great idea. Let's go home. Well, it didn't take much to convince Father that there's no place like home. And that's especially true today, as families the country over get together to celebrate Thanksgiving Day and the many things we have to be thankful for. We Maxwell House people, for instance, we're happy that our coffee is America's favorite brand. Happy that in so many homes, Thanksgiving dinner means a pot of Maxwell House coffee brewing on the stove, as well as the turkey in the oven and the pumpkin pies cooling on the shelf. We take a lot of pride in our coffee, and we want you to know you can count on Maxwell House every cup you pour. We'll keep it always good to the last drop on Thanksgiving Day and every day of the year. Let's see now, where was I? You were going to say grace? Not yet, Bud. I haven't finished telling you about Benjamin Franklin's prayer. There are two more sections. Isn't that nice? Only two more. Dear, maybe I'd better put the turkey back in the oven. But it won't take more than another minute. And then do I get the drumstick? You can have both drumsticks. Oh, boy! Hey, wait a minute. Your father's only joking, dear, aren't you, Jim? 
You know, if it weren't for all this talk, I could have been through telling you about it two minutes ago. Yes, dear. The trouble with this family is everybody wants to talk and nobody wants to listen. You're so right, dear. Anytime I... <laughs> what did you mean by that? I was agreeing with you. Oh. Well, anyway, in the third section of his Thanksgiving prayer, Franklin went into the intangible things of life, such as the literature and the arts. You know, there aren't many people today who realize how grateful we should be for the pleasures we get from books and things like that. You mean Benjamin Franklin had comic books? <laughs> Kathy, this will probably amaze you, but there are other kinds. Oh, that's right. What a knothead. That'll be enough of that, bud. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What about the fourth section, Father? I haven't finished with a third. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> when Franklin referred to the arts, he was expressing gratitude for the pleasures we receive and also for the help. Wait a minute, haven't we gone through all this before? Oh, yes, Father. You bet, Dad. I don't remember anything like this. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I don't. There's something about Ivanhoe. Your mother was getting ready to do her canning and... Yep, it was about Ivanhoe. <laughs> Schools. A lot of good schools are. You said it. I wouldn't care if they taught you something important. You said it. But all that junk they make you study. You said it. Why don't you keep still? I'm on your side. Well, get over on her side. <clears throat> okay. But just because you got a C in English doesn't mean that it isn't important. You said it. I thought I told you to keep still. You told me to get on her side. Bud, you said it. <laughs> Kathy, wait until I say something. Okay. It doesn't make any difference what you intend to be. A knowledge of literature is one of the finest things a person can have. Now? All right. You said it. <laughs> uh, just because you think you're an actress. That has nothing to do with it. Literature is the principal difference between animal and man. And girls, too. <laughs> Kathy, why don't you keep out of this? Can't I be on anybody's side? Well, what's going on in here? Hiya, Dad. Father, will you do something about Bud? Oh, I don't know. He seems like a nice enough fellow. Maybe we'll let him hang around a little while longer. What do you think, Kitten? You said it. <laughs> <laughs> but he thinks they ought to change the whole school system just because he got a C in English. I do not. You Yes, he does, Daddy. That's what he said. I didn't either. Oh, you did too. Just a minute, both of you. Betty, what's this all about? Bud thinks English is a waste of time. No, I don't. But why should I get a C just because I don't like Ivanhoe? It's part of your course, isn't it? Well, sure, but what good is Ivanhoe if you want to be an engineer or something? Well, you'll find, son, that a knowledge of the classics will always come in handy. That's exactly what I told him. And Ivanhoe is wonderful. He's a jerk. <laughs> but He is, Dad. The jams the guy gets into for no reason at all. You know, Bud, it's been a long time since I studied Ivanhoe, but I still remember it. On his bold visage, middle age had slightly pressed its signet sage, yet had not quenched the open truth and fiery vehemence of youth. Right, Betty? Father, that's from the Lady of the Lake. <laughs> oh, I, uh, they're both Sir Walter Scott, aren't they? Well, yes, but... Bud, you'll find as you grow older that there's no substitute for a sound literary background. For example, Mr. Gribble came up with a quotation at the Chamber of Commerce luncheon the other day. I stood in Venice on the Bridge of Sighs. He was very pleased that I recognized the line from Shakespeare. Father... Betty, I'm trying to explain to Bud... But that isn't Shakespeare. It's Lord Byron. That is Shakespeare. It's from The Merchant of Venice. I'm sorry, Father, but it's from Child Harold's Pilgrimage. Don't you remember? I stood in Venice on the Bridge of Sighs, a palace and a prison on each hand. Uh, that's right, now that you mention it. <laughs> Dad, if I don't like this stuff, why do I have to learn it? Because it's very important. And if you don't believe me, here's a quotation that proves it. 
The arts are known as the stepping stones to success. Right, Betty? Right. Ben, now, if you'll excuse me. But, Dad... I'm sorry, Bud. I promised to help your mother with her canning. You mean I have to keep on reading Ivanhoe? You'll read it and like it. Holy cow. How am I supposed to remember things like that? I haven't looked at a copy of Ivanhoe in 25 years. 25 years? Jim, you won't ever learn, will you? About what, honey? You can't get mixed up in those school things with the children. I got out of it, didn't I? Just because you were lucky enough to remember a quotation. Well? Whose quotation was it? What, dear? Who said it originally? Oh, uh, I did. <laughs> What was that, Father? I, uh, we'd better not go into it right now. If it's the same thing I'm thinking of, you'd better stick to the turkey. You're so right. Well, in the last section of the Thanksgiving prayer... Hey, we're in the stretch. Bud. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad. Well, I don't mind. I can sit here all night. Father, please. We won't say a word, will we, Kathy? All I can think of is the drumstick. All right. In the fourth and final section of his prayer... Benjamin Franklin covers the balance of our earthly benefits, not the least of which is health. And while we've all been blessed with remarkably good health through most of our lives, there have been times when, well, we've had our anxious moments, haven't we? Jim, I... I don't know what to do. We've done everything we can, honey. But she looks so small and pitiful. She isn't going to die, is she, Dad? Of course not. Gosh, if anything happens to her... Uh, Bud? I'll get it, Dad. It's probably the doctor, honey. Now, pull yourself together like a good girl. My poor little Kathy. Margaret, that isn't going to help her at all. We've got to be strong, both of us. Oh, Jim... Dad, it's Dr. Simmons. There you are, honey. The doctor's here, and he'll take care of everything. Dr. Simmons? Hello, Margaret. Do you want to go right upstairs, Doc? It's Kathy. In a minute, Jim. What seems to be the trouble? We don't know. Why don't you go upstairs, Doctor? She's awful sick. We'll take care of her, bud. Margaret, when did it start? Uh, I don't know. She was okay this morning. Bud, please. She came home at... Well, it was four, I think, and she looked very white and... <laughs> Oh, Jim. Oh, honey. Has, uh, has she complained of any pains in her back or her legs? We haven't been able to get her to say anything. She just lies there. Any temperature? She's hot and cold and... Oh, my baby. You alone, Jim? No. Betty's up there with her. Well, I'll go up and take a look. You'd better come too, Margaret. Doctor, if anything happens to my baby... You've got to stop thinking that way. Nothing's going to happen. Gosh, it makes you feel kind of weak inside, doesn't it, Dad? Yes, inside and outside and all over. It makes you feel weak and small. So many things you want to do and you can't do any of them. You never think of anybody like Kathy getting sick. She's always been so healthy and strong. I know. Heck, she can lick any kid on the block. She'll lick this too, bud. She's got to. Dad, if she gets, I mean, when she gets well, I'll never pick on her again as long as I live. That's fine, son. I'll never call her a knothead or a squirt or noodle nose or... Oh, no. Have you got a handkerchief? I think so. There you are. Thanks. Here you are, Dad. You may keep it. Thank you. Father. We're right here, Betty. Do they want us? No, they made me go out. Oh. I didn't want to, but... Oh, Father, she's so sick. I know. Want to borrow my handkerchief? I have one. She just lies there, and I've been so mean to her. No, dear, you've been a wonderful sister. I haven't. Last week I smacked her because she spilled my perfume. Well... I don't care about the old perfume. I just want Kathy to get well. She will, sweetheart. We've all said our little prayers. We've all got her very close to our hearts. She'll be all right. She's such a sweet child. She's a good ball player, too. 
Your mother and I have gone through this a great many times with both of you, as well as Kathy. When you're married and have children of your own, you'll do the same thing. Boy, what a thing to look forward to. It balances, bud. A few short moments of worry and anxiety and then long, happy hours for all of us. That's the way it goes, doesn't it, Betty? I wish I hadn't smacked her. You'll smack her again. Father, how can you say that? If she smacks Kathy, I'll smack her. I wouldn't dream of touching her. Well, we'll see. Jim. Doctor, is she all right? Is she going to live? Of course she's going to live. She'll be up and around in no time at all. Oh. My poor little sister. Boy. It wasn't anything to get excited about in the first place. It wasn't anything serious? Of course not. What was it? Well, technically, I suppose you'd call it uh, multi-caldare canini. That's about as close as I can get to the Latin. Canini? Right. Translated roughly, that means too many hot dogs. <laughs> hot dogs? You mean that's all that was wrong with her? Just eight hot dogs. Why, the little knothead. <laughs> you can go up if you like. Wait till I get my hands on her, scaring me like that. I asked her to lend me a quarter, and she wouldn't, but she had enough for eight hot dogs. Wow. It's a great life, isn't it, Jim? You said it, Doc. It's a great life. <laughs> Yes, we've worried and fretted, but we've always come through all right, haven't we? Daddy! Yes? I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, Kathy. What is it? I changed my mind. May I have a wing? Kathy. What a beetle brain. Bud. <laughs> <laughs> but I looked at it so long, I got tired of drumsticks. <laughs> Jim, now? Yes, dear. We'll have Benjamin Franklin's Thanksgiving prayer right now. For peace and liberty, for food and raiment, for corn and wine and every kind of healthful nourishment, good God, I thank thee. For the common benefits of air and light, for useful fire and delicious water, good God, I thank thee. For knowledge and literature and every useful art, for my friends and their prosperity, and for the fewness of my enemies, Good God, I thank thee for all thy innumerable benefits, for life and reason and the use of speech, for health and every pleasant hour. My good God, I thank thee. Amen. Could this be you after Thanksgiving dinner? Oh, honey, I don't want to eat again for a week. But tomorrow, it'll be a different story. This is the most delicious coconut cream pie I ever ate. Can I have another piece, huh? And delectable coconut cream pie is a breeze to make with new Jell-O coconut cream pudding and pie filling. There's nothing to add but milk. And it's Jell-O coconut cream pudding and pie filling for red-letter desserts. <laughs> Thanksgiving comes only once a year, but some good things we can enjoy every day. For example, when it comes to truly good coffee, with a flavor you enjoy cup after cup, you can count on Maxwell House every time. It's the one coffee that's always good to the last drop. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson with Roy Bargay and the Maxwell House Orchestra. In our cast were Norma Jean Nilsson as Kathy, Jean Vanderpile, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. So until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, brings you mystery tonight on NBC.